This lecture is part of an online course on commutative algebra and will be about stalkwise locally free modules. Um, this is a somewhat technical topic. Um, so they're closely related to other sorts of modules. We have locally free modules that we talked about a couple of lectures ago, and we have projective modules and we have stalkwise locally free modules. And projective modules are sort of bracketed between locally free modules and stalkwise locally free modules. Um, so all three of these sorts of modules are the same for finitely presented modules. Um, and in a previous lecture, we discussed the relation between locally free modules and projective modules. And what we're going to concentrate on this lecture is the relation between projective modules and stalkwise locally free modules. Um, so first of all, we'll give an example of a stalkwise locally free module that isn't projective. Um, so for this one, we just take the ring R to be the integers, and we take the module to be all numbers A over B with B square free. Then you can easily check that for any prime in the spectrum of Z, we have M localized at the prime is just isomorphic to Z localized at the prime. Um, so, you can think of all stalks of M are one dimensional free modules. However, M is obviously not um, projective or free um, over the integers projective modules are the same as free modules and M obviously isn't, isn't a free module. Um, this gives a counterexample to uh, one of the attempts to define invertible modules. So we say module M is invertible um, if um, M is locally free of rank one. And this example shows that you can't replace locally free with the concept stalkwise locally free, because this module M is stalkwise locally free of rank one, but it's not free, but it's not locally free of rank one. Um, well, this module M is um, not finitely generated. So you might think that maybe for finitely generated modules, um, Stalkwise locally free modules might be projective. So the next example shows that this fails too. Um, so for this example, um, you recall that we had this ring R, which was functions from X to Z modulo 2Z, where X was some infinite set. And we had the ideal I, which was functions of finite support. And I was an example of an ideal, or rather a module, which was projective, but not locally free, which we discussed uh, one or two lectures ago. And instead of the module I, we're now going to look at, take the module M to be R over I. And we're going to show that this is stalkwise locally free but not projective. It's also finitely generated. Um, in fact, it's generated by one element, um, but not finitely presented because um, the ideal I is not finitely generated. Um, now to see that all the stalks are free, 
we notice that any localization RP is isomorphic to Z modulo 2Z. And this is because um, R and R over P is Boolean, which means X squared equals X for all X. Now, if you've got a Boolean ring um, that's um, local, this implies the ring is just Z modulo 2Z, because um, if it's local, then any element not in the maximal ideal must be a unit. So as its square is equal to itself, it must be either one or zero, and it can't be zero, so it must be, so, sorry, can't, so it must be one. So one is the only element not in the maximal ideal, which means that the, the, the ring is just C over two Z. So this means that all modules over R or over any Boolean ring have all stalks free because they're modules over the field with two elements and must therefore be free. Um, on the other hand, um, um, M is not projective. Um, this is because we've got the exact sequence naught goes to I goes to R goes to M goes to zero. And if M was projective, it would mean this um, exact sequence would split, um, which would mean that I, but the R is the sum of I and M, which would mean that I was also finitely generated, but since I is not finitely generated, it's not split. Um, well, I mentioned that this module is not finitely generated, and we're now going to show that um, a a finitely presented um, plus stalkwise locally free implies projective. I go through this. this proof is kind of a little bit technical and actually won't lose very much just by skipping it. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to assume we've got a sequence naught goes to k goes to F, goes to A, goes to zero, where A is stalkwise locally free. Um, now, stalkwise locally free modules are always flat because you can check whether something is flat by just looking at the stalks. And if the stalks are free, then the stalks are flat. And we're going to take um, F to be free. Um, and um, we're going to take I to be any ideal. And we first note that K intersection FI is equal to KI. And this is where we use the fact that A is flat, because what we do is we compare the following two sequences. We've got naught goes to K tensor I goes to F tensor I goes to A tensor I goes to zero. And we can compare this with naught goes to K intersection FI goes to FI goes to AI. Um, so that should be a tensor sign goes to zero. So these are the same because F is free and A is flat, which means that these two modules here <coughs> are actually the same under the natural isomorphism, which easily implies that these two modules are the same. And the second step is we note that if U is in K, we can find a homomorphism F from F to K fixing U. And this follows from step one because we just write U is equal to the sum of RI times FI for um, FI a basis of F. Remember F is free. And we let I be the ideal R1, R2, and so on, um, generated by the Rs. Um, and U is in K intersection FI, which is equal to KI. So U is equal to um, sum of KIRI to sum KI. And now we can just define the homomorphism F by making F of FI equals RI. Step three says that if 
u1 up to u n are in k, we can find f to k fixing all the ui. And this follows from step two by using induction, which I feeling too lazy to give the details of, and anyway, I want to leave room for the final step. And fourthly, we notice that if k is finitely generated, then a is projective. And this follows from step three, because if k is finitely generated, then we can find a map from f um, onto k fixing all elements of k. So this sequence splits I don't know why it keeps doing that. So A is a direct summand of a free module and is therefore projective. So this is an example where you've got a subtle difference between finitely presented modules and finitely generated modules. So you know over a Noetherian ring, anything finitely generated is finitely presented, so this doesn't really matter. Um, but here, um, finitely presented modules that are stalkwise locally free are projective, but finitely generated modules that are stalkwise locally free are not projective. Anyway, I think that's quite enough on this rather technical topic. Um, so next lecture will be on flat modules, which are probably the single most important class of modules.